Hello and welcome to another episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. I'm Mike Evans. And I'm David Price. And I think we've gone into antiques roadshow mode this week because you seem to have bought something from, I don't know, for time warped back in. What on earth do you have here? Yes, well this is a Garrard 125SB, Mike. Of course it is. So it's your favourite turntable. <laughs> but you, I've just nicked it out your main system. Of course it is. So uh, look and, at that. Uh, we know that Mike is a huge name fan. Well, here's the DIN plug. Oh, that would fit into my Nate. It, well, it probably would. I'm probably only in the tape input. But uh, yes, I know yes. you're a fan of DIN plugs. So this is obviously hardcore hi-fi uh, credibility and kudos. Does this have a ceramic cartridge or something no, like that? How dare you! <laughs> It's got a moving magnet. <laughs> you, you... Obviously not original from 1912 or yeah. whenever you got that. You're, you're a Does it just play 78? It's accusation. I think it also plays other speeds as well. <laughs> Actually doesn't have 78 on this one. <laughs> now look, I'm so. doing this a disservice because this is, this was produced local to us. This was a yes, Swindon. It was, I yeah. Can you do a Bristolian accent? I'm not going to. My lover. <laughs> you just carry on. I'll let you... Why don't you talk in Wiltshire in a <laughs> heavy Wiltshire accent for the rest I of could, the? Uh, the I could have a go and drink cider. Yes, yes, yes. Well, that's a good idea. We'll try that next time. Yeah, it sounds like a great <laughs> idea, actually. So, um, yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, apologies for my uh, my colleague's uh, flippancy here, <laughs> if that's a word. Um, but this is a classic uh, turntable from Swindon. Um, it's a Garrard one two five SB. And it's basically a luxury SP25. So our riff is devoted to the SP25. Um, but um, we, we've, we're illustrating this because this is like the pinnacle of sp 25 Is that like saying it's like a luxury reliant Robin? Yes. No. So it's... Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> so if you wanted, if you had an SP25 uh, in, in the mid-70s, you would dream of having this uh, beautiful turntable here i'll just uh, hold it up like that see as long as it doesn't You're break very anyway. brave yeah so you can't do that with a lin mic you probably you'd, couldn't you'd you'd wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to lift it bearing. you would actually so yes. there you go and uh, you can actually lift it as well which uh, unlike uh, my technics sp15 to, to be fair the <laughs> reason why i'm being a little bit scathing is because i'm feeling a bit pompous because i've got a pioneer pl 12d um, which which um don't don't mention that <laughs> in, in in you know as a Wiltshire resident myself, it was that turntable, the PL12, killed this, the, the oh. Wiltshire turntable industry. It, and do you know, you had the most brilliant analogy because you were talking about the uh, the Honda CB750 motorbike, yeah. how that killed the whole of the British motorcycle industry. Yes. And the Pioneer pretty much did the same for a while, didn't it? It that did. sort of came yeah. out and, yeah. and ruled, the, ruled the school. It did, um, yeah. But interestingly, this was... What year did you say this was again? So this was about 76, 77, 78. So we're, kind of we're well into Lynn Sondek territory, aren't we? Yeah. You know, the Lynn was 73-ish, yeah. you know. Yeah. So five years on, and they're still producing this and, and trying to compete against the Lynn. Yeah. So maybe not price-wise, I don't no. know. Do you know how much this would have been yeah, well, when it was this, new? So the SP25 Mark IV, let's say... Uh, it, let's say it's 1976, <clears throat> and you know Barry White is in the charts. And, yes, uh, Elton John and Kung, Kiki D. Kung Fu fighting. Yes, Carl know. Douglas. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All that sort of stuff. Little bit frightening. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. exactly. Um, do you want to sing the rest of it? <laughs> it just <laughs> always made me laugh. Everyone was Kung Fu fighting. Yeah. It was a little bit frightening. Yeah. Just, you know. Well, it would be if I was doing it, uh, <laughs> mainly to myself. But um, yeah, so um, this was uh, this would have cost around 40, 45 quid, 50 okay, quid. Okay, so the limb was like 280. Yeah, so at the time, okay. yeah, I mean, the limb would be well <clears throat> into the 200s. Um, sure. And the LP12 in the mid to late 70s was your kind of, you know... Um, quintessential British high-end super deck, wasn't it? Yes. Um, and this was your sort of quintessential British entry-level turntable. So would this so. be like, in all seriousness, like say something like a dual CS505 Mark II, yeah, that's which is what I cut my teeth on. Yeah, that's an absolutely so. great analogy. Okay. So so this would be the um, the late 70s, the mid, the sort of latter half of the 70s version of the, uh, of the dual, I guess. Um, and the Jewel kind of arrived, the CS504 arrived, I think, in 1979-80, and then the 505 was a cheaper version of that. Sure. Um, 
and that kind of totally dominated the 80s didn't it yes for entry yes level absolutely entry level hi-fi turntable um and this was kind of a rival to the pioneer pl12 d or the 112 later nowhere near um, as good nowhere near as good yeah exactly um and uh, and that that viewers was its tragedy it's uh, such a shame uh, that was it? wiltshire's tragedy <clears throat> my my county's tragedy and uh, you know and you you can be as flippant as you like mike but it, but, it killed swindon but they did <laughs> they did the 301 and the 401 yeah didn't they and i remember the th the it was either the three or the four one had it you could have an sme 3009 tone arm on it which was a cracking tone arm i bet that was a decent yeah. decent setup i'm yeah. not saying yours isn't by any no. stretch of imagination the sp25 is a legendary turntable how, how, and the what dare you the, the 125 is you know <laughs> is obviously a hundred times more are so. you i can almost sense this in, insincerity from you there mike <laughs> so, it's not like you to be that so I, i'm i'm a little bit disappointed that i haven't had a chance to listen to this um, well, you don't, don't be. <laughs> I was just looking at this, this mat here. That mat looks so. That's what kind of dates it. Surely, if you could just take that off and put a nice felt mat on, it would it would look yeah, so much would, more modern. It would probably help. And then if you took the arm off and put, you know, uh, uh, I don't know, it on or something. On. Yes, that's right. Yeah, maybe. Uh, and then you yeah. took the belt drive system and and off and put a Pioneer PL12D belt drive system it, in it. Um, yes, and yeah. a Technics direct so drive motor. This actually looks like oh. a kind of computer tape drive. It does, it? yes. So yeah. I'll just demonstrate like that. That's very. That's like Brett Blake 7 or something, isn't it? It is, so, yes. So, yeah. um, but this is actually very cheap Mazak, which is kind of cheap alloy. <clears throat> and I don't know if the microphone can pick it up, but it's yeah, ringing sure. more than, uh, you know, sure. Big Ben, basically. Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. How how the world has changed you know, yeah. with all of the materials and things. Yeah. But this is kind of genesis in many ways, isn't it? This would have been entry level. This would have been you know the 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 the, the start of your hi-fi journey for that era. Yeah. So you know, so if you were if you were really getting into hi-fi in the mid to late seventies, then this would be you know your start. You probably have something like I don't know a, a quad amp or a leak or you know um, something like that. Maybe. Yeah, I think it's probably a bit too high end. I think yeah. if, you, if you're running a quad amp or a leak, you probably have a three hundred one or a four hundred one. Okay, or an SME. fair point. Yeah. So I mean, I think the thing about the Garrard SP twenty five range in general um, was that it was a kind of poor man's high end. Sure. That makes any sense. Sure. So, um, so you've got to think about the audio industry and indeed the high you think about british culture and and british lifestyle back in in the mid 70s um so most people you know that the general standard of living uh, at the time was a lot lower than now um and um most people the largest thing they'd ever they'd ever buy would, would be a house yeah um and uh and then a car and then a hi-fi sure and um for most people, hi as opposed to us, which is the largest thing we buy is a hi-fi, then a house, then a car. Yeah, <laughs> something like that. Or largest thing is a yeah hi-fi car, then house. <laughs> yeah, well, for you, <laughs> yes, yeah, largest so, bill anyway. Yeah. So, um, but the point the point is is that um, in terms of hi-fi, most people would have a have a kind of record player, a mono record player, um, or a, a music center, or it, before that, a radiogram. And um, this was a step up from that because it was separate sci-fi and uh, it had features that, that aped, you know, more, more sort of expensive hi-fi. Yes. Um, it was a kind of Cortina, we were talking about this before, it's like a Cortina 1.6L. So it was, um, you know, it, it was good enough and, and decent enough to be respectable. And for most people, it was all, all they ever wanted. Sure, you know? sure. It wasn't a Jensen Interceptor or an no, XJS, no, obviously. No, sure. But for most people, it did the job, and it did the job pretty well. Yes. And the SP25 uh, range, which Garrard first launched in 1967, uh, kind of catered for that market very well, I think. Um, and its rival was uh, BSR. I don't know. Do you remember BSR? I used to have a BSR deck. So uh, for, it, what, yes, it start, came with. Well, it came with the music yeah. centre. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So your starter for ten. What did BSR stand for? Oh my gosh, well, it's British. No. Nope. Okay, I've gone really well. <laughs> <laughs> so it was <clears throat> Birmingham Sound Reproducers. Wow, is that so, right? So you had a kind of Swindon Birmingham dynamic going on. There, yes, interesting. You know? Yes, um, and. Um, 
so it was either Garrett or BSR in this market sector. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll just plunge the depths of hi-fi geekery to tell you that it would be a BDS-80 Never. or... B- I know it's not like me. It would be a BDS-80 or BDS-95 BSR against the SP25s. So, um, you know, sort of cheap but but good, as it were. Maybe we can play some light music over that yes. bit. Yes, yeah. a bit of easy listening. <laughs> yes. Bert Bacharach, Perry <laughs> That sort of thing. So, uh, um, um, <clears throat> yeah, so yeah, the, the point is that... Um, uh, these decks offered um, uh, automatic functionality, uh, not this particular one, but the SP25s did, um, and um, you know they had a half decent tone arm, uh, and with the emphasis perhaps on the half. On the half, <laughs> yes. Than, yes. Um, they came in a luxury uh, plinth, um, which is a you know sort of this is sticky back plastic. It's vinyl, fake teak uh, yes. vinyl veneer. Yeah. Uh, with a very very cheap uh, sort of uh, uh, I don't know what the was uh, a chipboard or something yes and a nice detachable head shell yeah yeah and they're all sprung independently sprung sub chassis which was good you know uh, many decks th- these days aren't and, and springs are good for suspension um, and the tone arm um, on the SP25s was just about capable of tracking a half decent basic moving magnet wow okay so like okay. a Sure, M seventy five six or M seventy five ED. You know the friction is is it's it's much less than a music center. You know, but it's it's not exactly an SME um, three thousand nine or something. It's interesting how things have changed, isn't it? I mean, yeah. uh, we're we're just about to do a review of the uh, we've got the Lin Sondek LP twelve Select yep. edition, which is we've got their new arm and cartridge on and. You, know, you look at the difference in build quality and standard, and it's it's night and day, isn't it? You know things really have evolved. In the same way, you know a Ford Cortina wouldn't cut the mustard with a no. you know a modern day um, average car. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know whatever that might be. Yeah. Absolutely. So, but you know, despite that, I think it's still a thing of beauty, and it's so nice to see some of this retro stuff come through. Um, and you know, it's 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 part of our heritage. It's put us where we are now, hasn't it? Yeah, absolutely. You Wherever know. that might be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's really bad. Then. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So, but I mean, I think the I think the thing to you know, the, the the nice thing about it is that, you know, in in nineteen seventy sitcoms and that kind of thing, you'd see this mm. kind of thing. You know, so Reggie Perrin's boss C J would probably have a. A Garrard SP25 or something, and he'd have, you know, sort of basic separate hi-fi with maybe an Armstrong amp and some kind of thing, um, sort yes. of Wharfdale Dentons or something. Yes. Um, so you know, it was part of the fabric of the of, of the kind of hi-fi world at the time. Um, and in terms of sound quality, um, you'd you know, a Riga Planner One or a Project Debut would do. Much better. Yes, yeah. Much, much yes, better. Yeah. A dual CS505 would be much better too. Yeah. And a Pioneer PL12D uh, mm. would be much better. Um, there's quite a lot of wow and flutter. Uh, it's about <clears throat> 0. 0.15, 0. 0.2%. And uh, yeah, exactly. Thanks. <laughs> and uh, well, you generally think that if it's under 0.1%, then it's not too intrusive. But if it's over 0. 0.1%, then you can really hear the wow and flutter. Um, so it is a bit a bit wow and fluttery. Um, the latest, the late ones like this are belt drive. The earlier ones were rim drive. Um, there's a sort of hardcore fraternity of rim drive turntable fans out there. On the, you're you still, okay. I, I, I just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, so you lost me at Blake Seven. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, it's it's fascinating, this, isn't it? Because. Yeah. Because David talks about, in, in, we do these riffs, he's talked about Blake Seven. He, he knows the name of Reginald Perrin's boss. Um, we, you know, I mean, the wow and flutter figures of a Garrett SP125. I mean, wow. No wonder no wonder we have so much wonderful hours down the hi fi pub <laughs> talking I, about No wonder my life is such a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know loads <clears throat> of things, just all the wrong things. <laughs> <laughs> just can I just yeah. top tip here, yeah. never ever play David at top trumps. You will lose. You mm. will lose. Full stop. End of. It's like he can see your cards. Yeah. It's terrible. <laughs> well, you just play the wrong cards, Mike. So. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> I think we've been playing top trumps since we're about 
10 or something, haven't we? I don't know. Yes, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And I've, I've still not won a game. Probably too much information. I've still not won a game. <laughs> there we are. So there you go. So the 125SB pot pickers, if you're interested in investing in quality British uh, uh, turntable, uh, then don't buy this. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> this is the luxury uh, one, uh, SP25. Um, and uh, you know it's 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 a lovely novelty item, I'd say. Yes, oh, a nice oxymoron so, as well, a luxury um, SP twenty five. Yeah. Yes, and the, actually, in all seriousness, the tone arm is is good enough to sound reasonable, but is not too too sensitive and can't be easily damaged because the precision of the bearings is pretty bad anyway. So it's quite a good kids turntable. If I wanted to buy one of these off yeah. eBay today, what would I be looking at? Um, a life sentence. <laughs> so, so insanity. Um, no, I mean seriously. Um, I don't know, fifty quid or something. Okay. Okay. Um, so this one Very does cool. come with a luxury <coughs> smoked uh, dust cover. Are you trying well. to sell it on eBay? Is this why <laughs> yeah. we're doing this riff? Yeah. Well, we'll put it up on Instagram because yeah. it's getting in the way of everything else. Um, Excellent. But yeah, it does come with a dust cover. You, you, you. In the old days, you had to pay extra for a dust cover. Is that right? So, yeah. What were you yeah. supposed to do? Just put a cloth over it or something? Yeah, something like that. Wow. Well, okay. Yeah. Well, there we are. So, well, thank you for bringing it in. I know I'm yeah. taking the mic, but it's a glorious piece of equipment, and it really yeah. is quite, really quite special. But while we're so, here, if I may, please, uh, very quickly. So, Garrard started in 1721. 1721. 1721. <laughs> became the Crown Jewellers of London. Um, made rangefinders for the British Army in World War One. Uh, and then started doing mach machine to tools and motors. And they moved from London to Swindon, uh, I think, in 1930. So I've, I've written all this down. It's not coming from my... <laughs> he hasn't. He hasn't. But, he just knows all this rubbish. And um, it uh, it started, I think, in the, the modern era of turntables in about 1959. It became part of Plessy. Um, but this... Really, this brand actually has a lot of heritage for the, for the UK. I mean, there's Amazing. not many hi-fi manufacturers that could claim a link with a, t with no, a company that no. started in 1721. We're lamenting a loss here, aren't we? It is sad, actually. And yeah. we're, we're being a bit flippant about this and sort of uh, taking the mickey a bit. But, um, you know, it was a great brand. And it was a, back in the day when stuff was made in the UK, you know, not just expensive stuff, but but mass mass produced stuff like yes, this. Yeah, it's all made in the UK, um, and um, uh, the sort of nineteen. Basically, this is one of the last Garrard turntables um, of that era. Um, the the brand was sold to uh, a Brazilian company called Gradiente um, in I think it was nineteen seventy nine or something, uh, and. Uh, Many of us hi-fi guys know the brand as a, a, a something that Terry O'Sullivan of Lorrycraft worked for. He, in the nineties, uh, he uh, and the two thousands and twenty tens before he retired, he was restoring three hundred ones and four hundred ones, which were the kind of you know Jensen interceptor Garrard to the Ford Cortina one point six that this is. Right. So very you know very high end, very nice. Uh, uh, broadcast turntables um, and it's now gone into ownership by the Cadence Group uh, which is uh, sitting next to Spendor and Siltec in, in another kind of big hi-fi uh, group as it were right. so the brand is is alive and well again Wow! Uh, and you can buy a Garrard turntable again so well that's really cool let's hope it's a little bit like um, like Peter Farrow our friend who yeah. has uh, English electrics English acoustics, who um, who who sort of does the modern take on the on the leak amps, yeah, um, yeah. and does an amazing job with them. Let's yeah. hope that Garrard sort of yes. resurge. Well, I do hope, especially they start remaking this. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. So, um, uh, at the uh, you know the fifty pound price point uh, that uh, it lasts all that. Yeah. So there yes. we go. Lovely. Well, look. Thank yeah. you for that. Appreciate that. Bit of. Beautiful uh, history there for yeah. Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff yeah. and a bit of our nation's heritage, exactly. uh, a bit of Wiltshire. There we are. Absolutely. And on that note, David, thank you very much indeed. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We'll see you at the next episode of Mike and Dave's Hi-Fi Riff. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.